Hello, welcome and good evening to another Let's Code episode, and this time concerning Assembler for MS-DOS. And yeah, um, this will be not that long of an episode and it will deal with the very basics because I just moved house and uh, nothing is really set up and I just already recorded this video but the sound was pure garbage because I don't have my microphone here and I have to record with what I have and since there's not this much stuff in the room the echo is pretty pretty bad I hope this sounds now quite some something better because I'm basically holding my phone up to my mouth but yeah um, so is life but let's get started with the assembly in the last live stream we did a bit of inline assembly for Torbosi and yeah I wanted to try out the Torbo assembler itself because assembly language is pretty basic and not that hard it's often cited as being for the experts but i think we can do a hello world program today and you can use a different assembler of course there's microsoft's macro assembler or later versions of the Tobe assembler there's the netwide assembler nasm and some other stuff like a86 and much much more but since we're using Turbo C 2.01 in this series, the Turbo Assembler 2.0 is actually pretty fitting. And you can look at the manual on archive.org. The software itself is not for download available on legal sites, but there are some grayish, let's say, not quite legal download sites that archive a lot of Microsoft related software for the old DOS machines, which are not commercially interesting anymore. And if you search for Turbo Assembler 2.0 download or something like that, you will probably find it. Or you can buy a used copy on the market, but it might sometimes be hard to get hold of it. Anyway, there's also on SourceForge the GUI Turbo Assembler for Windows, which includes the Ball and Turbo Assembler and Turbo Linker. I'm not sure how they license it, but um, it is there and I haven't used it because I'm running macOS, but you Windows guys probably can try it out and supposedly it should be fine for learning assembly stuff, at least according to the uh, screenshots down here it looks pretty okay. But other than that, um, yeah, let's let's get rolling. Uh, I downloaded the install package for the pure Turbo Assembler 2.0. I'm gonna run the install program install from my hard drive to my hard drive and this will be very quick and it will take one or two minutes from floppy on a 286 or 386. So that's that. Um, when you switch to the TASM directory there will be lots of stuff in there. Uh, a lot of example assembler files, which is pretty nice. Some C files and how to interface C and Turbo Assembler. And yeah, we can run the Turbo Assembler just by writing TASM. It has quite a few options, but we won't use any of those for today. That's fine. And whenever you put a, an assembly file in there and uh, run TASM, it will produce an object file, obj, which is basically the assembled bytecode of what you just wrote. But you can't run this. For that you need the linker called tlink. And tlink will create an exe file from the obj file and that you can actually run. So let's run Turbo C because we need an editor. Um, and we will write this to a program called hello world.c, no, dot asm. And what does an assembler program look like? Well, an assembler program has different segments. And the most important segment that you need is the code segment because you will put your code there, obviously. But this is not everything that you can have. If you look at the ball and tube assembler menu, it will tell you 
you will also need to specify the memory model which we already know from Turbo C and we can actually have a look here um, if we go here to the compiler options you can choose between five six different memory models from tiny to huge and depending on that the kind of the pointers and the amount of code and data that you can use varies for now we will use the small memory model that will be fine we also need to specify how large our stack is because whenever we make a sub procedure call or push something onto the stack well we need space for that and this is done by specifying dot stack and then some arbitrary value uh, 100 hex is 256 bytes which should be enough because we actually are not going to do much of that anyway the last segment that you need to specify is the data segment and here we will put our variables basically um, and how to do that we will learn in a second one more thing if you're writing a DOS program is to write the directive DOS seg which means that these segments will be ordered in the way that Microsoft actually wanted them to be ordered and we can have a look at this in the manual which I downloaded for convenience sake and here around page 108 we find this the DOS seg directive causes the segments in the assembler program to be grouped according to the Microsoft segment ordering conventions for now you don't need to worry about what that means all you need to know is that almost all standalone assembler programs will work just fine if you start them with DOS seg so um, that's fine and also dot model is explained here as well as the other directives so you definitely should have a look at that it's pretty interesting stack code and data are mentioned here as well and here you can already see how variables are declared um, you can declare word byte or several other kinds of variables and you already see here what a string sort of looks like and let's dissect that a bit more so we need to put something in the data segment obviously and our hello world message will be called hello and it will be a string so we have single bytes so db defines our bytes and you can simply write a string by writing it in uh, these single quote quotation marks so we'll put hello world in here and when we look at how DOS actually um, outputs data onto the screen there's one function the interrupt 21 function 9 print string you already know interrupts from our turbo c examples where we use it for video mode setting and similar things so to access this function we load the value 9 into the ah register then we need to load ds and dx with a pointer to the string ending in a dollar sign and that will output the character string to standard out so actually we need to put a dollar sign here and how do we load this stuff well um, first of all we need to load the address and usually you want, would do something like move ds and then the segment of the variable which you can do via writing the seg macro for the hello variable but this is not allowed you can't write directly to the segment registers this is some kind of security feature of the intel cpus you first need to load it into a general register like ax and then you can do move ds comma ax so this will load the segment part of the address of hello into ax and then push that into ds now ds has the correct value and we need to load dx with the offset and for that we have a macro called offset and again we use hello for that 
Then we can load AH with the function number 09 and call the interrupt21 hex, which will print our stuff. So this should in theory work. Um, we can try out if this is actually valid stuff. So second DOS window and uh, I'm gonna try to assemble this. There were no complaints, which is fine. Then we're gonna link this because it produced an OBJ file. And now we should have all our files there. Yeah, there's a hardware exe file, a hardware hello world exe file. And it gives us a DOS error, which is interesting. And this is because we probably didn't quit the program correctly, I think. Um, other than that, the segment and the offset should be fine. Yeah, I think we should quit the program correctly. And there's a function for that as well. So DOS has tons of function, as you can see, for file handling, networking, and most importantly, terminal process with return code. This is something that we should definitely do. AH will be loaded with 4C and AL with return code. So uh, we can directly write to AX and write both values at the same time. 4C is the uh, function and 0 is our return code because everything is just fine. And this is signaled by that. And then we can run the TASM again and link and run and there you go we get a hello world our very first program now one more thing one little thing to add is if you want to write a second string we can just define another variable right so let's call it message and this will be called root 42 Users assembly, yay. And we can copy the whole block here. Later we will learn, in, in a different episode, we can learn how to do loops or function calls or something like that. But for now, this is fine. The data segment is actually staying the same, but we load it again just to be on the safe side. We will output the second message. And what's going to happen? What do you think? Actually, it works, but everything is in one line because the print string does just that. It doesn't print any new line. And if you want to do that, you need to split the string and put in the values, the ASCII values for, whoops, sorry, the ASCII values for DOS new lines. and. DOS uses actually two characters, 13 and 10, for carriage return and uh, line feed. And Unix uses only one of them, which is a point of concern for a lot of programmers who have to switch between platforms. When I do this now, we should get a new line on every output. So let's assemble it again link it and run it and there we go we have two lines printed to an assembly and this was actually pretty easy right so all your assembly programs will look something like this define the model define the stack some data some code and then you use some opcodes and by now we only seen two different opcodes MOF and int but there are many more for looping for calculating stuff but you already learned how to put stuff into registers, how to load a segment register, how to get addresses of variables. This is quite a, quite a bit of stuff. So if you have any questions, please put them in the comments. And um, I can also do, for example, a little primer on assembly language in one of the upcoming episodes. You can go to the Help PC 
website and look up all the basic assembly commands for the x86. Um, there are other sites which do that probably more comprehensively, also for 386 and higher stuff. But this is already pretty nice. You can check out the morph instruction for example and see what kind of parameters it takes, how long it takes on different CPUs. And this is pretty nice and also look at the different jump instructions which you need for doing actual <laughs> clever code uh, that does something. So there's a lot to be learned, but I think this is already pretty nice and shows that assembly isn't quite that black magic, but actually a pretty simple language. It takes of course a little bit of um, work to write bigger programs in it and you have to do everything manually. This would have been just two printf lines in C, but here it is quite a bit more involved. But you get a pretty compact program if you look at this. We have, oh come on, where's, here it is. We have a program which is 584 bytes in size. We can even squeeze the down much smaller if we don't produce an exe file, but a com file. We'll do that in a different episode. And maybe we can try to write some small, nice, um, little mini graphics programs or even games in assembly. But for today, I think that's it. Please share, like and subscribe the video. Leave a comment, as I said. Don't hesitate to put some questions there. And also, if you like, you can support me on Patreon or Ko-Fi. If you can't do that for whatever reason, that's fine. Stay healthy, stay safe, and see you next time.